got Justin here. He's a two-time state champion, three-time All-American. Russell's at Grandview University. Grandview University is got a real trend going on. Are they going for 10 next year? Next year will be our 10th national title. 10 national titles in a row. So it's great being a part of a program like that, being a champion on and off the mat. So let's make sure we're being respectful and listening. If you got questions at the end, I'm sure that he will answer them. I tell you what, you know, both him and his brother, um, when I first got to know him was at Indiana camp, I think it was the first camp ever. And you guys had to get different cars and you know, you had to drive like, you had to be in one of those, not extended cab like Silverado, but like a, uh, like an S10 truck all the way like eight hours almost. Yeah, we drove like four hours in our car. And down just to be a part yeah. of the camp and um, that just shows that their work ethic, to me, was second to none. You know, it wasn't just their accolades of being state champion, and being all American, and things like that, but just their work ethic, commitment. Hey, we want to get there to the camp. We want to have an impact on the kids. Okay, and that's why they're here. Tonight. So, a round of applause for Justin and give some applause. All right, so listen closely. I'm gonna be kind of all over the place here. I just wrote down a bunch of different thoughts about my philosophy on you know, wrestling and life and a bunch of different things like that. And if you guys stick around, for the end, I'm saving the three keys to happiness. I've got it all figured out. I know how you guys can be happy, but we'll go over that at the end. So first thing I'll talk about, something that we stress all the time at Grandview, championship lifestyle. Keyword, lifestyle, all right? It's not just about anything on the mat. That's less than a fraction of your life, right? Wrestling's fun and everything, but it won't take you, it really won't take you that far in some, in some instances. So it's all interconnected. If you wanna be good at wrestling, you gotta be good at school. You gotta be good at your family life. If you're religious, you gotta be good with your connections with God. And if those aren't all in place, then it's gonna be a lot harder to be successful. So raise your hand if you like doing homework. Depends on what it is. <laughs> All right, yeah, so not many people like homework. Raise your hand if you like waking up early and going for runs and being sleep deprived the whole day. Not very many people. Doesn't matter, you gotta do it anyways. If you're not tough enough to sit down and do your homework for an hour, if you're not tough enough to do the dishes when your parents ask, you know, something really small like that, then how the heck do you guys expect to be tough enough to win any type of wrestling match? Wrestling's one of the hardest things you guys are gonna do. So if you guys are too soft to be, you know, getting all of your homework done or helping your family out or simply to stay out of trouble, then it's going to be really hard to be tough enough to win at wrestling. So one thing I like to do with things that I don't like to do is kind of lie to myself a little bit, tell myself that I love it. All right, my coach at my college, Coach Reedy, he's, he's crazy, but anytime it's something that we don't want to do, for example, moving the mats absolutely sucks. But you know what? I love it. I freaking love it. So next time that you guys have to do something that doesn't really seem enjoyable, just tell yourself, dude, this is fun. I'm gonna enjoy this. And it's magically gonna get easier. I swear, it works just like that. You pretend like you love it, and you're gonna love it. So, um, yeah. It's, it's just crazy how much our own heads really control all of our reality. You guys can control your happiness, all right? You guys can control your work ethic. You just gotta be excited to go to work. Did anyone come to the 715 workout this morning? Good, was it nice waking up early? Did you yeah. guys enjoy it? No, but you guys got, all got way better than everyone else who wasn't here. You guys all learned how to hit slide bys and all these other guys probably enjoyed the little hour of sleep. I'm sure that was really fun, but you know what's fun? Winning. Winning's probably the most fun thing you can do. So sometimes you gotta sacrifice a little bit of fun for winning. All right, next I'm gonna talk just a little bit about nutrition. So the first thing I'm gonna say is honestly, none of you should really worry about cutting weight too much. It's the one thing I hate about this sport. Like I freaking love wrestling, but weight cutting is, it's really bad mentally, it's bad for your bodies. Try to stay away from cutting a lot of weight. 
with that being said, there's a lot of tips that I follow as far as nutrition goes that it's not really dieting, but it's stuff that will help you stay healthy and feed your gas tank. So for one, try to eat six meals a day. It might sound crazy if you're trying to cut weight. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. But um, you gotta keep your metabolism high though. If you guys are only eating once a day, your bodies are going into starvation mode. They're trying to hold on to everything inside of you and it's gonna be even harder to lose weight and your bodies are gonna be absolutely drained. So keep your metabolism high, six smaller meals throughout the day. I would say three meals, three snacks or whatever. And your body's gonna be getting rid of this weight because it knows that you're gonna have plenty of food in you. Building off of that, drink as much water as you can. I'd say for most of you guys, a gallon of water would be good. Sounds like a lot, but your body needs water. It's the number one thing that your body needs. So do not be cutting out water. Stay away from saunas and steam rooms and stuff like that. I mean, you can use them as recovery, but not as a means of losing weight. If you do want to cut water out of your body when you're cutting weight, I would say maybe cut your water in half a day or two before weigh-ins, but you should never be cutting out all of your water. You're gonna cramp up and you might die. I'm scared, yeah. So keep drinking your water. Um, next thing I got on nutrition, keep a good balance of carbs, fats, and proteins. Do I need to go over what carbs, fats, and proteins are? You guys all seem smart. Carbs are like stuff like bread. That's energy, all right? There's good carbs and bad carbs. Obviously, sugar is a carb. Try to stay away from things that are high in sugar. Um, but you need carbs for lots of energy. Protein, that's the stuff that takes care of your muscles. That's, you know, meats, stuff like that. And then fats. Fats are good to have as well. Um, I forget why, but trust me, <laughs> you need a good balance. Um, and then, yeah, another important thing about diet, the last thing I'll touch up on, is it's okay to screw up sometimes. If you guys have a little candy bar here and there with one of your meals, that's okay. W willpower is a real thing, and. You don't want to be draining like too much of it. So I see a lot of people try to cut sweets 100% out of their diet, and then it bothers you mentally, it bothers you physically, and then people end up binging and eat six candy bars a night. So if need be, it's not the end of the world. You have a little bit of something to, to satisfy yourself with every meal. That's all I got for nutrition. Um, next I'm gonna move on to talking about success and how you define success. You know, everyone wants to be a state champ, everyone wants to be a national champ, but you can't base your success on like outcome-based validations, all right? Because, like honestly, anything can happen in a wrestling match. I lost in the national finals this year to a guy that I truly believe I'm better than. It was just a, it was a really weird match, but like I'm trying not to let that like bother me because anything can happen in those six or seven minutes. So if you're so worried about the outcome, then you're really missing a lot of the point of wrestling, all right? I'll be cliche and say, you know, it's all about the journey and stuff, but it really is. Anything worth doing in life is not gonna be easy, all right? And that's what makes it so worthwhile. Like, I, I don't wanna be handed a national title. I don't wanna be handed straight A's or whatever. I wanna work for it. So just keep setting your goals high. Make it something you guys gotta work for. And just remember it's those, you know, long nights, hard practices, tears, sweat, all that type of stuff, you're gonna look back on, and regardless if you accomplish your, you know, your state title or whatever it is that you guys want, you're gonna look back, and at least, I hope that you guys can look back and say, hey, I gave it my all, I put my, like, I put all my work in, and even though I fell short of one goal, you can still be proud of the work that you put in. So, main idea there is, don't worry about the outcome so much. All right, so many of you guys get all tensed up and scared to go out there and wrestle, especially at this camp. Nobody cares if you lose here. Go have fun, go take some chances, go fight. Just go fight out there, all right? Nobody cares if you win. And I wanna add something right there too. I got a question for y'all. I, so the D2 National Tournament got canceled the day before it happened this year because of the coronavirus. Canceled the day before. I got 364 days through. Are you gonna tell me that whole year was a waste because I didn't get to wrestle at nationals? My goal is to win a national title. I would love to win a national title. Canceled the day before. Was my year a waste? No. Exactly. It wasn't a waste. So it really is. They couldn't take away. I, I didn't. I couldn't win that national title, but they couldn't take away everything else that I gained throughout that season. All that hard work, all that bonding with 
you know, my teammates and stuff like that. So it really realigned, like, I hope that doesn't happen to y'all, like, you know, your state tournament or whatever getting canceled. But it really kind of changed things in my head, too, and made me realize what really is important. Because, again, 364 days through a season, a tough wrestling season, you know, I trained every single day to win a national title, canceled the day before. Was that season a waste? Passion. Very good point. Moving on, I'm gonna talk, this is more wrestling specific philosophy, but it's called the plus minus equal system. Um, does anyone know who Bernard Brace is? He's a jiu-jitsu guy, one of the best jiu-jitsu guys ever, and he kind of came up with the system. But what it is is, in your practice room, you wanna be able to find a plus, a minus, and an equals. Here's what, that, here's what that means. A plus is someone who is way better than you. Someone who's gonna just put the beat down on you, make you tougher, expose your weaknesses, and just dominate you. You need someone better than you that's gonna push you in the room. You need an equal. You need someone that's about on the same level as you because those are the guys that really simulate like a match feeling the most, and those are the guys that you're gonna be growing together with, and they're gonna help take you to the top. And then lastly, believe it or not, you need a minus. You need someone in the room that you might be a little bit better than. Those are guys that you can really work on technique with. Those are guys that you can, you know, maybe boost your self-esteem a little bit. Sometimes you need a win in there. And uh, more so than anything, working with a minus, you know, you can kind of work on teaching them stuff. If you can teach someone something, then I would say that you're probably close to a master at it. So make sure in your guys' practice rooms, talk to your coaches and try to find someone that's, you know, someone that's definitely better than you, someone that's gonna beat you up, someone that's gonna, you know, be right on that level that you're really gonna have to try your best against. And then someone that you can kind of beat up a little bit. So that's good. Another big, I would say the big theme of my college wrestling team this year was being a dog chasing a car. Okay, um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen stray dogs just chasing cars down the street. But when a dog's chasing a car, they don't think about who's in the car. What's gonna happen when I get the car? Why am I chasing the car? They're not thinking about anything like that. They're just chasing that car like crazy. Go, 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 go. Nothing else matters. And that's kind of how you guys should be when you're out on the mat, all right? Don't be thinking about the outcome. Don't be thinking like, oh, this guy's top five on track, I'm, I'm scared. None, none of that stuff matters. Just go out there, be a dog chasing a car, all right? Nonstop. Then, okay, so I like what I call the one-up rule. And that's basically, this is just something simple. If a coach tells you to do 25 push-ups, how many push-ups should you do? Five. 25 if you want to be average. If you want to be like everyone else, sure, go ahead and do 25. You'll get just as good as everyone else. Why not throw a couple extra? Why not get 30? All right, if you get 30 push-ups and instead of 25, boom, you're five push-ups better than that person. If you do that every single time you guys do push-ups, it's gonna add up. Your arms are gonna be huge. And those dudes are gonna have average looking arms. So anytime coach tells you to do something, you know, run three sprints, go ahead and get an extra sprint. Do more, all right? If you guys want to be average, go ahead and just do what, do what coach tells you. But it's a very simple formula. If you guys want to be successful, do more than everyone else. All right, it's, it's really not that complicated. If you guys really want to achieve your goals, if you guys are really serious about this type of stuff, do more. I'm happy to see all of you guys at this camp because this is doing more. But yeah, there's a lot of optional stuff here. It's only optional if you don't want to, okay? It's mandatory for winners, all right? Everything is mandatory, plus more. Okay, so I like the one-up rule. A story I like to tell people, um, it's with my brother back in high school. One day after practice, I saw him do like 300 jump ropes or whatever. I didn't know how many, but I went up to him and I asked like, how many jump ropes did you do? He told me, eh, 300, which might seem like a lot, but that's kind of an average amount. So I started doing 300 jump ropes every day. He noticed that and Obviously we're twins, so like, I don't want this dude being better than me. I don't want him doing more than me. So next thing you know, he started doing 325 jump ropes every day. I started doing 350. We kept going up and up until we got to like 800 or something. Lots of jump ropes, but main idea there is find a buddy that's just as serious about success as you. Find someone that's gonna push you every single day to do more and just take them along on your journey. Every time they go on an extra run, go with them. All right, a lot of people say, what's the, what's the phrase? Uh, success is it's lonely at the top. You guys know what I'm talking about? It's, it's like a lonely road to the top. Yeah, it can be lonely, 
But if you surround yourself with people with like-minded goals, then it's gonna be a lot easier to be successful. Some of my best friends are the hardest workers on the team. Uh, Gabe Rangel, Laura, Jazz too, they, they um, like if you look at practice, we're the last ones out of practice every single day. There's a reason that we're, that we're friends. There's a reason we're so close to each other. We, we've got the same type of dreams. We got the same type of work drive. So if you're hanging out with people that like to just go home after practice, play Fortnite all night long, or I don't know how old some of you guys are, but you're all too young to be drinking, but stay away from people like that. Stay with people that are gonna push you and bring out the best in you and really kind of push you towards greatness. Um, okay, now I'm gonna talk about ego and pride. Um, ego is the enemy, all right? You guys wanna stay away from that. Raise your hand if you think you're tough. No one thinks you're tough? Yep. All right, all right. Well, you gotta find a good balance, right? Yes, you gotta think, hey, I'm the toughest dude here. I'm better than everyone else. I do more than everyone else. I'm meaner than everyone else. Yeah, you gotta believe that. But at the same time, a lot of you guys probably don't know what true toughness is. A lot of you guys probably don't know what good hard work is. And there's always gonna be someone that's working harder than you, okay? So you gotta, you gotta check yourself. Don't be sitting on the couch thinking like, yeah, I did enough today. I, I worked out for two hours, that's good. It's probably not enough, guys. Keep, keep doing more. Um, seven here, last one. But yeah, um, I'm just gonna say this, and this might come as a shock to some of you guys, but all of you guys are absolutely nothing. Nothing but, I mean, a normal human being. I'm the same as you, I'm the same as you, but we're all the same. And that might be tough for some of you guys to hear, like, they're not that special, but it's also pretty comforting. Because every time you go step out on the mat, it's just another dude. I don't care how many wins he had last season, I don't care what his results are. And that's, that's, that's like the beauty of the sport. It's human versus human. You've got a chance of beating whoever you go out against. So, you know, I want it at least, don't have a huge ego. Don't be thinking that you're tougher than everyone else because you're not, okay? You're all equal out there. When you step on the mat, and you gotta treat guys that way. So, yeah, that's all I got to say about that. So, yeah, just like that, we're towards the end. I'm gonna talk about the three keys to happiness. Any guesses besides you guys who don't know? How can you be happy? Money. <laughs> Money's nice. Money can make people happy. What do you think? Doing something you love. Doing something you love. That is a good way to be happy. Chase, chase your dreams, chase your passions. Um, so. Yes, having fun with your family members. That's incredibly important. Spend time with your families. So. Here's what I'm gonna go over, and these first two were actually done by a psychologist at my university. He did an experiment on you know thousands of people, and this is what he came up with. Gratitude and servitude. Those are the first two keys to happiness. Gratitude, that's being thankful. It's cliche, but like it, it's really that simple. Like every day you should wake up and ask yourself, what am I thankful for? Write it down. Can I see some people raise their hands? What are you guys thankful for? What are you thankful for? Family. Family, yup, we were talking about that earlier. Family is one of the best things people can have. You. The sport of wrestling. The sport of wrestling. Oh, I love the sport. Yeah, it's a great place to be. I'm super thankful for it. What are you thankful for? The opportunity in these hard times to uh, be able to still come out and wrestle and be with all your friends and family. Yeah, yeah, like, this has been a tough summer. This has been tough for everyone. And the fact that we're here together, all doing something we love, awesome. Uh, I'll do like two more people. What do you think? Huh? Oh. A home? Yeah, dude. Not everyone has a home. Don't, do not take that for granted. Next time you guys want to complain to your mom about doing dishes, go ahead and pack your bags and go live on the street. Like, just be, be thankful for your family. What do you got? Jesus. Jesus, yep. I don't know if you guys are religious or not, but if you are, you better thank your God every single day. Like, that's important. Um, so yeah, just remind yourselves every day, like, what are you thankful for? That's one of the most important things to be happy for. Um, and then servitude. Does anyone know what servitude is? What, what's servitude? Well, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so servitude is helping others, serving others, which might not make any sense. Like, how is helping others going to make me happy? But, but yeah, it's, it's really that simple. Do something for other people, and that's going to make you happy. Like, yeah, I'm getting paid for these camps, and you know these are fun, and this is my job. 
But I love seeing you guys here. I love making you guys better. I would consider doing it for free for, for some people. But um, like this is how I, I find some of my happiness, all right? I'm gonna be a teacher when I graduate college. I'm gonna be a special ed teacher specifically. And <laughs> but yeah, so. <laughs> Get out of this belt of that. All right, not quite yet. All right, but um, let's see another raise of hands. For some people that haven't raised their hands, what's a way that you've helped someone out recently? Even if it's something super small, anything. What, what, what Supporting them through hard times. No one wants to go through hard times alone, so go ahead and be there for that person. It might not be convenient, it might not be fun, but go ahead and sacrifice a little bit of your time and help someone in need. Aww. One of my boss's friends like, destroyed her foot with a wagon, so I landscaped their yard. Yeah, okay, so helping an injured person with you know, a job that needs done. All right, there's a lot of different ways you can help someone, even if it's something simple like you know, giving them a little bit of gas money or helping them out with a little bit of technique on the side or just smiling at someone. That's pretty simple. Just smile at someone, that really goes a long way. So, gratitude and servitude are the two that were like proven in scientific study. A third one that I kind of added in, and I mean, it's whatever, but it's growth. I, I find happiness every day that I grow, and that can be in wrestling, that can be growing your relationships with either your friends, boyfriend, girlfriend, family. This, I recently decided to try learning Japanese, so like, just challenge yourself to, to grow every day, you know. Kind of like with wrestling, I don't want your outcomes to be, like, I don't want your happiness to be based on your outcomes, all right? But if you guys can see yourself growing every day and becoming a little bit better every day, to me, that's happy, all right? What's, what's a way that some of you guys are challenging yourselves to grow? Or anything you guys are doing to become better? Working out every day. Working out every day, yep. Every day, any type of workout, that can be better. Anything else? All right, so to recap, the three keys to happiness. I'm serious, guys. It's this easy. If you get anything from this from this talk tonight, remember the three keys to happiness: gratitude, be thankful, servitude, just helping others, and then growth. Challenging yourself to grow every day and seeing yourself become a better human, no matter what it is. So, those are the three keys to happiness. That's pretty much all I've got like, written down. It's kind of all over the place. I was just thinking of things that my coach tells me. My coach is a genius who talks. So. I'm done talking for the most part. If you guys have any questions, uh, you guys can either raise your hands or just come talk to me afterwards. But yeah, nice talking to you guys.